Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson. Um, this is going to be a charcoal project. I think it's the first charcoal project that I've taught. Um, so we've done a bit of pencil work in the past. Um, we have looked at different um, kind of application in terms of charcoal or how, we, how you would use charcoal and different types of it, I think, in a materials lesson. But nothing that kind of focuses on actually making a charcoal artwork from scratch. Um, so I think it'll run about four four different lessons um, this little course. Um, we're looking at a, a fairly loose application of charcoal so you can actually get quite accurate with charcoal and a portion of this drawing will be accurate but primarily we're looking for um, how you can get nice loose effects with charcoal. Um, so we'll be looking at different ways of applying the charcoal, how you would achieve different textures, um, how you can use a vignette to affect. So a vignette is where you kind of you leave certain parts of the drawing kind of untouched so the white paper will show through and it creates a kind of um, erratic pattern around the the image and it, it it makes it very obvious that you're not looking at a photo, you're looking at um, a drawing. Um, looking at how we, we kind of use addition and subtraction in charcoal um, and how you can use a focal point to kind of focus in your composition. Um, so when we we work in charcoal and we're loose, it can be nice to kind of pick a certain point in the drawing where you, you get really detailed and that tends to be where your eye will move, um, where your eye will focus in on. Um, so yeah, they're the kind of four primary aims for this this uh, set of lessons. Um, it's going to be broken down into um, sort of line sketching and kind of adding in loose shadows as we typically do with the drawing and painting videos. From there, adding tone and texture and starting to build form. And then once the form is kind of established and the general image is in place, we'll be looking at addition and subtraction with charcoal. So charcoal's uh, a very um, kind of powdery um, medium compared to pencil. So pencil, you kind of add as layer after layer of the, the graphite sliding off the tip of the pencil. Um, sorry, my computer's running a bit low. Whereas uh, charcoal's a much more kind of powdery pigment that sort of sits on the surface of the paper so you can kind of dust it around, shift it around with different tools. We're going to be looking at different types of tools that you can use. Um, uh, as you remove the charcoal and you add the charcoal and you shift it around the page. It's a lot less permanent than, than graphite is, essentially. <clears throat> and then the final lesson will be kind of building up our detail in, in certain parts of the drawing, generally a kind of a focal point within the drawing, um, and looking at how that leads the eye in and then kind of finishing off the uh, the vignetting and the textures that we want in the drawing. Um, so I'm just going to swivel my camera a bit and zoom in. I'm working from a photo reference. Um, I won't zoom in so it's as close as it can be, but it's basically a just a drawing. It's going to be a drawing of a shoe. Um, facing away from us. So it's this old leather kind of brogue, um, which made for an interesting subject. It's it's kind of a nice, interesting shape in its own right. It's recognizable to a certain extent, but then it's somewhat kind of unusual because it's not how we typically look at a shoe. Um, leads us nicely into the image and then a kind of simple tabletop and background. Now with your, your charcoal drawing, you could work from a portrait or you can do a, a still life as well. Still life tends to be, if you're working from life, a still life is easy to set up and keep in roughly the same lighting conditions. Um, this was lit just with daylight in my studio, so it's quite a strong light to the right of the, the shoe, casting a kind of fairly deep shadow underneath it and then a little bit of a shadow projecting off um, beyond the toe of the shoe. Um, but yeah, you can pick a single object or a group of objects can be interesting, so things of different values, different ref reflectivity of the objects. So you could go for something that's highly reflective like a a teapot that's made of metal or something like that. Um, you can look at porcelain, which is very bright white, obviously has some, some highlights. Um, different fabrics you could lay out. There's all sorts of things that you could potentially draw. But the main thing is just playing around with these techniques. Um, but yeah, mainly generally you want to kind of focus on still life for this exercise. We'll be doing some other exercises where we work in charcoal and landscapes. Um, and charcoal can be a really useful tool for landscapes. Um, but yeah, for this one we're just working in charcoal. 
so to begin with I'll just go through the tools that I'm using so you'll see I've got a drawing board which is an old painting um, I've taped up some backing paper behind my top sheet of paper so there's about two sheets of paper um, behind and then over the top I've taped this piece of paper which is reasonably hard wearing I recommend trying to get fairly hard wearing paper when you're doing charcoal drawings if you use cheaper paper it basically starts to kind of uh, pill up and get a bit too weak to work over the top of you can't erase it you can't build uh, build your drawing up and you tend to kind of if you're using um, some of the tools that we're going to be using they can start to wear the uh, wear the paper down a bit over time so I'm using a paper which I don't know if is actually possible to get anymore but it's called Fabriano uh, Roma paper if you can it's about 10 pounds a sheet or something which is double this size um, and it's 100% cotton paper which is it's almost like drawing on stone or something like that it's a really really um, tolerant paper to work over the top of um, fairly textured so you'll see you get some interesting textures as I work over the top of it um, as I say nowadays it's hard to come come by but a good uh, substitute is Fabriano, Fabriano Angre paper which is I-N-G-R-E-S um, but I'll write this out in the accompanying document um, and in the comment or in the description below <coughs> below the video um, there are a few different papers you can use I think there are some some ash paper which are good um, but yeah generally you want a fairly hard wearing drawing paper ideally with a reasonably high cotton content um, not so much watercolor paper because it tends to be um, it's not so tolerant of being erased and you can do quite a bit of erasing when you're working in charcoal so that's my paper that I'm working with um, then I'm using again I'll put this in the comment section below but I'm using a type of charcoal called nitrum charcoal um, which I may have recommended to a few students in the past um, basically it's just a very kind of refined charcoal and you can actually buy it unlike a lot of charcoal it's possible to buy it in um, hardnesses so a bit like graphite you can buy B charcoal so you can buy this this is a B which I'll be starting with then you can also get um, this is an HB and then you can also get H which is the obviously the hardest possible um, charcoal so they actually grade it in terms of hardness and softness which is good because cheaper charcoals tend to be very variable sometimes you work with them and they're really hard and you can't barely make a mark and then other times willow charcoals like this it, certain bits of it will be really soft and it will easily, easily be applied so if you want to build up a lot of density like a lot of darkness density to your charcoal drawing um, this nitrum charcoal is really good again it's it can be quite expensive so it's up to you whether you use it otherwise it's fine to use charcoal pencils or um, you can use blocks of charcoal I, I do also have this block charcoal which is fairly soft as well um, and I'm also using so for erasing I've just got a kneadable eraser which I often recommend so we'll be able to shape that into a particular shape as we work um, for textures I've got a sponge just a regular washing sponge um, so you can use that to slide the charcoal over the paper a bit if you want to mess around with possible textures you can use brushes as well any kind of like rough um, roughly textured material um, I might use some kitchen towel it has different effects so we'll look at how that, that affects the the drawing um, you can get a hard eraser as well I don't have one with me at the moment but hard eraser sometimes is necessary if you want to get right back to white in certain sections that'll probably be a bit later in the drawing we won't need it for probably the first or second um, pass once we get into addition and subtraction you might need to kind of remove a lot of charcoal from the surface um, and finally I've got a kind of big sanding block you can get much smaller versions of these but I find it easy to just if you get like a big roll of um, fairly fine uh, sanding paper and cut it kind of roughly a bit longer than the length of a little panel like this um, and then you can just wrap it around and tape it at the back and you've got a really broad um, sanding pad we can use so I'm gonna sand just have a look at sanding um, this 2B right now if I kind of start sanding it to give it some more shape try to keep as much as so you can see I've now got a point with that charcoal as much as possible try to keep your dust because you can actually use it you can drop it onto the paper you can blow it onto the paper 
um, can create some nice effects. So don't get rid of your charcoal dust, basically. So let's get started. Um, as I say, I don't want to be too, don't want you guys to, or I don't want to be too kind of rigorous with this drawing. We want it to be kind of loose and kind of slowly work to a focal point within at the end. Um, so we, we're not going to add detail too early on. Um, which means in the beginning, I'm just going to use that piece of charcoal that I just um, sharpened um, and start kind of roughly plotting how big I want the, uh, the shoe to be there or thereabouts. So we're not working too much in shape just yet, just working kind of roughly in line, kind of creating a little box to fit the, the shoe. So if necessary, you can take a little bit of a measurement to see, let's say how wide, how tall the shoe is compared to its width. So one, one and a kind of Maybe one and a quarter or something like that is its height to its width. So if I decided on the height, then I can do the same thing on my paper, which you'll have seen in some measuring videos before. In terms of positioning on the page, obviously we're starting about think about composition here. I could put it high up and have very little background, or put it low down and have background above, which is more similar to my reference here. And I quite like the height above the shoe, so. If I think, well, my drawing might reach down this far, which means the bottom of my table might be kind of somewhere like that. These lines I'm putting in really softly, so they're very easy to get rid of. You can just see a very faint line there for the edge of the table. Mm, that's maybe a bit too, a bit too low. So as you start to add these lines, you can kind of picture in your head how everything's going to sit. I feel like maybe about kind of here seems about right for the shoe. This sort of positioning. Don't mind it being too broad on the paper. So I'm fairly happy with that being the kind of bottom of the shoe. And as I say, height wise, it's going to be one and a quarter. Which means that's one. Quarter might come to about about there. And then this was the other edge, top of the shoe kind of sit roughly in the center. So we kind of confirm that measurement a bit. One. one quarter. Yeah, so I'm reasonably happy with that. You can kind of just faintly see. So if I think of it as as a kind of rectangle, I fit everything in. You can see the rectangle works something like that. But I've roughly tried to put each point so I know the very edge of the, the left hand side of the shoe there um, is roughly midway inside that side of this rectangle. Um, the lip maybe sits just slightly, or well, the tongue, sorry, the top of the tongue sits just um, to the left of the center. Then the back heel sits maybe that far down. Something like that. So I've now got the, the kind of boundary outside the shoe, um, which is good. So the first thing I want to do is block in the rough shape of the shoe. Um, being fairly loose as I say, so I'm 
this is about the center so the back of the heel sits just inside the center there working really loosely as I say. By no means do you want to go in too heavy um, with the drawing at this point. You want to be able to erase easily. So you can see these lines are so soft in this charcoal. This is a very soft charcoal that I'm working with. Very easy to erase. I barely have to touch the paper and it starts to erase which is really good. So yeah, you can see fairly quickly we've blocked in the outside of this uh, the shoe. As I say, I don't want to get too too detailed with it. I don't want to get too tight because um, we want it all to feel quite loose. So I can kind of roughly look now for the background line. I'm just going to kind of run of that far behind then start to kind of think about how I'm going to shade and everything around it. So yeah, I'm fairly happy. So that's all we're thinking about when we're blocking in. Fairly happy with how that's that's all managed to fit in. So I'm avoiding erasing too much, just kind of working over the lines I already have. As I say, everything's kind of loosely placed in. I can start to look at some more features of this shoe. Some of the detailing, some of the forms of the shoe as well. So where the where the wrinkles are. Because it kind of becomes the form of the shoe, which is interesting to start looking at at this point. If you're working with different objects, you'd be thinking about different forms, different aspects of those objects. In the case of this shoe, I'm trying to think about how the, the stitching kind of follows, because the brogue, the stitching sort of follows the, the forms of the shoe. 
um, and it's helping me make decisions about the outside shapes as well. I'm fairly happy with how that feels. I'm not too concerned about it being super accurate, this drawing. So some of the other stuff we do is like really accurate. But with these ones, it doesn't matter if it, it it's not entirely perfect. Um, I'm looking for something a bit more expressive. So um, yeah, I'm fairly happy with how that's blocked in. So now I can start thinking about kind of adding in some shadows. So within the shoe, um, I could shade this in. This section here where the tongue is is a bit shaded in. There's definitely a, sh a definitive shadow kind of underneath the shoe here. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a shadow projecting out from the front of it, but you find that a little bit later. So start thinking about the background. So by far the darkest part of this drawing I'm going to make, or well, the part I'm going to make darkest is the the background behind the shoe. So I can start adding that in a, a bit more heavily. You see I'm still using construction lines at this point. Allowing them to kind of hatch and cross each other a bit. lost a little bit of that curl that was quite nice in the front of the toe of the shoe. So I'm just going to try to recapture that. So now I'm fairly happy with the the overall shape of the shoe. I can start kind of blocking shadows in a bit a bit more heavily. going to go too far because it's going to be the next lesson where we start to look at um, vignetting which is what I was talking about earlier I'm just going to use the last part of this session to just refine some of these shapes where necessary make sure I'm fairly happy with how everything's going 
in terms of shapes. Yeah, it's not too bad. So you can see everything's fairly simply blocked in. Um, that's all we want for this first stage. Just looking at shadows, kind of general line work and shadows in the beginning. So from next week, we're going to start kind of adding in textures and starting to build some basic forms um, over the top of this. So we'll be looking at different ways of applying, how you can shift the, the charcoal around and so on. Um, but for now, we're, we're just going to stop there. Hopefully that was interesting. Um, I recommend you subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the new lessons that we're putting on. Um, subscribe to the YouTube and if you want um, even more kind of uh, more for from these lessons you can sign up to the OCAD um, studio um, in which which will allow you to get one-on-one -on -one tutoring with myself and other tutors attached to the school. Um, just to help you work through these projects and give you a lot more guidance than you get working by yourself. So yeah, I definitely recommend that. Um, but otherwise, I will see you guys soon.